So this is one that I've been looking forward to for a long time. I'm here on Sackville Street, just a stone's throw from Savile Row at Kent, Haste and Lactor. Now we're all familiar with the famous Savile Row tailoring houses, but here around the corner are two legendary tailors, John Kent and Terry Haste. We had an opportunity to visit with them last time I was in London, and today I couldn't be more excited to be able to walk through these doors and commission pieces from these two tailors. Let's go inside and see what they have in store for us. John, Terry. Nice Kirby, to see you again. Kirby, for yeah. sore eyes. How are you? Terry. Hi, Kirby, lovely yep. to see you. Thrilled to be back. I mean, can, I have... can we take your hat, please? Let's Thank take you. your hat and yeah. umbrella. An umbrella, obviously. Proper. <coughs> Let me take that. Uh, proper February day here in London. We've only got one hanger, and this is for this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did you give him a raffle ticket for the. Yeah. <laughs> Do we give... Yeah. It's so nice to be back. I mean, one of the things that, again, I think that I really appreciate about you too is that amongst all my friends, the better dressed of them, you know, there's two names that keep on coming up, you know, John Kent and Terry Haste, Thank right? You. Well, and so it's a, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, again, just a stone's throw from Savile Row, I feel hidden in plain sight are just two absolutely legendary tailors uh, doing exceptional work. And so we're very excited to be able to film a little bit about that today. Thank you. Yeah. So one of the things that, again, just strikes me is the exceptional history that you two gentlemen have. I mean, you've been in the industry for a long time. You both kind of come at it from your own perspectives. So maybe for someone that hasn't seen our other videos together, you could share a little bit about your just story um, and how you got started in tailoring and some of your experience. And it is a story, I think. Between us, we worked out where we got 110 years of... Oh, no. Shocking, isn't it? 110 <laughs> years, oh man, of experience. <laughs> between us, which is quite something. I it really think. is. Yeah. I mean, in this industry where experience really does matter, right? I mean, there is, mm. yeah. you know, something to be said. I mean, tailoring is an oral tradition that has to be practiced, yeah. right? And again, so, again. you know, there uh, is absolutely something amongst tailors that have been doing it longer than others that mm. is just hard to really put your hand on. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, there's a lot of youngsters coming in, it'll be great, but they've really you know, got to work at it and get some years under the belt, haven't they? It's obvious, but I've got too many years under my belt. And wait, don't we? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, again, is kind of the incredible history that you two bring to this craft. Right? Yeah, we've got so much history between the two of us, haven't we? Where does it start? Yeah. Where does it end? Good. Not all of it's <laughs> good. good. No, yeah. <laughs> well, the work speaks for itself, and I must say it must be uh, exceptional history. Yeah, I mean, Terry, you lead off. You, you were with many, many firms. Go for it. And I'll... Yeah, it makes me sound like I've been yeah. around, doesn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> well that's this, good, though, this, right? In this industry, I think it, it makes a difference, right? Yeah, I mean, I started off when I was 15, left school, always wanted to be a tailor, so I came straight into tailoring and was lucky enough to get a job with Anderson and Shepherd. Oh really? Okay, so that's starting at, starting near the top. <laughs> Started at Anderson and Shepherd, yeah. I wasn't yeah, you know, I stayed there a year, but mm -hmm. I wanted to have something a bit more, I don't know, interesting mm -hmm. on from a Italian perspective. So I went to a little company called Chapman on Savile Row, who's okay. not around anymore. He died unfortunately a long, long, long time mm -hmm. ago. Um, and then eventually, after about five years, I sort of hooked up with John at Hawes and Curtis. Really? Okay. So you guys um, have been with each other that long? Yeah, we've known. We go back a long way, and it was it was great. Terry, he started. I was a cutter there, mm -hmm. and Terry came in as an undercutter, but he wasn't. He was more, much more advanced. But that's what you come in as a title, yeah. you know. But he was. I couldn't teach him much. He's pretty well there. I was only 20 then. You still know, well, I wasn't much, well, I was a lot older, but I mean, you already knew your stuff. You'd been around in as much as oh, the thanks. year. No, the year, you were, the, the year you were there, you picked up a lot, but it, you can tell we had another apprentice and there was no way he was going to make it and he left. But Terry, you know, obviously had, had, had what you need, you know, yeah. what it takes, as they say. I mean, as an observer, you know, I was sort of like, they didn't give me the manager type thing, mm -hmm. but I mean, I was kind of in between the workshop and, and the cutters and I kept eyes on things. Yeah. And he, he obviously didn't need a lot of it tuition for me, to be very honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, tailoring at the end of the day, I mean, especially pattern cutting is an art, right? And so you either mm. kind of have that instinct and that eye or you don't. And so I, I suppose what you're saying is that, you know, that's something that you see from the very beginning. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely, you can tell where somebody's got it, like any trade. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're a bricklayer and there's good, brilliant ones and you can see, <laughs> uh, it didn't need much, but the other chap did, and it one didn't last very long. Yeah, you see it pretty much straight away. We normally yeah. can tell within a couple of weeks if they're going yeah, to make it or not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, since we've been together in this place, which is, what, 11 years now, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, people floated in and floated out, and you yeah. can see some people that... Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you guys have known each other for so long. You started oh, out time. together, yeah, and then time. I kind of, you know, drifted apart and kind of did your own thing, and then came back 11 years ago you know, at Kent Haste, an mm. actor. I think um, that's a plus, don't right? you? That I think so. That you're not stuck in one, lo one, one yeah. avenue. He learnt other bits, I learnt, we, we, we incorporate each other, probably argue after time, but nicely. <laughs> you know, in a productive way. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But I think <laughs> Some but, of the time. No, no, no. <laughs> but one of the things that I see is that each of you really do bring a different approach towards the same craft, right? And that's one of the things I think struck me the last time we met is, you know, John, you're very much grounded in this, uh, you know, very classical tradition of tailoring. I mean, you were uh, worked very closely with the Duke of Edinburgh, and he's Thank very you. known for being exceptionally classic and well-dressed. Uh, but then, Terry, I mean, you know, you've done uh, also kind of your own work also that's mm. very kind of unique. Yeah, we brought uh, probably a bit more of the Tommy Nutter flair comes yeah. into my stuff, and even the Huntsman stuff when I was mm -hmm. with Huntsman as well. So... Um, there's not a massive amount of difference between the cutting styles of John and myself, bearing in mind, I mean, he taught me, so... Yeah. Well, no, no. Yeah, I've Very managed to put it all right since I then. I helped. Huh? I didn't concede you. You already knew, boy. You already yeah. knew. I've got his bad points. <laughs> <laughs> Eating. You've got my bad ways. You got rid of them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But yeah, there's very, very little difference, but there is subtle little differences and you can yeah. see the differences. But that's the beauty of bespoke tailoring is the details really do exist in the mm. subtleties, right? And you can yeah. have two gentlemen such as yourselves, two uh, absolutely exceptionally talented bespoke tailors, you know, doing the same craft, really, yeah. but yeah. bringing very subtle approaches in a way that really accents that and can make something that is the same double-breasted navy suit, yeah. but make it different yeah. you know, for mm. two different Just people. Just stamp our identity, yeah. our identity on it. But I've got to say that I, um, as old as I am, I will still say pretty well once every day I'll go, Terry, can you have a look at this? Would you do <laughs> Don't I, be honest. Yeah, I still, do, I, still, yeah still which is, I love it because I, I still, I'm not proud. And, you know, he, he cuts a little bit more a little bit snappier. Yeah. I can, believe mm -hmm. me, I was brought up on riding coats. Okay. I mean, whoosh. Yeah. But my, my style is quite wasted, but it, it's got, it's just a little snappier. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of look and think. It's probably a little less chest in mine. Yeah, it? yours, that's, that's right. I sometimes have a little bit too much chest, <laughs> yeah. which nowadays you reduce a lot because nobody really wants that heavy sort of You're look. You're talking about the drape yeah, throughout the drape. The chest, yeah. I mean, there's drape and drape. So, you know, we still give a little bit on an older type customer. Mm. I know Terry does. But mm. basically, um, let me compliment you as I've done before on that. So it yeah, would be you. more that styling mm -hmm. that we don't, we don't, you don't have to get a lot of waistline by building the top of the coat. You do it on the seams, on the, you know, you yeah, do it there on the side body. We don't body. like too much shape anyway, do we? That no, hourglass we're not, look we is can. If somebody staid, asked us for that hourglass look, we can do anything yeah. they like. But basically, we, we like, you know, that lovely subtle waistline mm -hmm. in the correct position as well. Because yeah. you see a lot of false waistlines which look all right on a certain person, on others it makes them look top heavy. Mm -hmm. You've got to go by the figure, really. I mean, Terry, Tommy Nutter, I mean, uh, talk about a legend in... <laughs> you know, really the history of tailoring over the last 50 years. Yeah, I'd meant it. I had a fantastic time with Tommy. It's just a shame he died, unfortunately. But and the time I was there, it was probably one of the most pleasurable times in tailoring, really. really? Uh, and some of the people we saw was just unbelievable. You know, it, was it was a revolutionary time for, yeah, you know, really kind different. of pushing the boundaries. It was very, very different. I mean, on Tommy's own jacket, so he, all right, we probably went a little bit overboard towards the end where you had shoulder pads that thick. <laughs> so that, that huge eight and a half inch shoulders. So you got huge, huge shoulders. But you know, it used to bring lots of stars in. We used to make the most bizarre things ever. But we still have some of our tailors that worked for us in those days working for us now. Yeah, wow. But, you know, they can make that bizarre stuff as well as they can make your paint yeah. bulk standard blue suit or a grey suit. Um, <clears throat> but that was a wonderful thing working with Tommy. Yeah. It was you know, never two days the same. It was always different days every time. And it, Smashing blow tail. Of, yeah, yeah it's brilliant to work with. And he just let you go and do your own thing. He'd just give me a picture and say, this is what I want. I want you to just produce it. 
So what do you think you picked up from that? I mean, if you were to look at, you know, your kind of DNA or kind of your voice today as a, as a cutter, you know, what, where are the echoes of Tommy Nutter in that? Well, I like that sort of square shoulder, slightly sharper shoulder line. Um, we get a bit of shape, but yeah, in them days, because you had the big shoulders, you had to have a big chest as well, so mm -hmm. I probably got away with that. But it's just different fabrics, all different fabrics, when you put different tweeds together, mm -hmm. and you mix and match things with that. We used to do a lot of that. So it's got that angle to it. And, you know, I'm not, <laughs> if someone comes in and asks me anything now, I'll just have a go at anything. Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably- well, you're quite before. adventurous in that. Yeah, that, very adventurous in, in whatever we do. Yeah. yeah so we used to do, I mean, the most bizarre things ever. We made something for Elton John once, which was so over the top, it was unreal. These big silk jackets, and then he ordered five more. <laughs> so it was like, wonderful, but it was very difficult work. I mean, there was, I think it was something like 40 odd buttons down one side of this really? coat. Really? Oh my goodness. Coat went down to the Hopefully floor. not with buttonholes. Yeah, there was, yeah. yeah one button on each side, yeah. The finishers were happy. Yeah. <laughs> my goodness. When yeah. somebody comes in without something way out, you'll, you'll hear a shout of, Terry, help! I'm joking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we, we try. We try. We mainly, I mean, I do a, a little bit of adventurous stuff, but it's, it's top notch out yeah. to be honest. Well, I've seen both of your work, and, you know, again, one of the things that I really appreciate is it's all very classic and perfectly executed. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Thank but you. again, there's a little bit of a difference and approach, you know. Terry yeah. kind of working in maybe a few more kind of accents or echoes of kind of your past with Nutter. Yeah, I think you know, it will. In a very subtle way, not in a way that, you know, no, would jump out if, yeah. you, if someone didn't point it out. And then John, I mean, you know, the stuff that you did at the Duke, you know, you know, I mean, you know, no vents and, you know, very kind of structured and traditional. Yeah. I mean, uh, you see you. that and it's absolutely beautiful and it's not something you it's see often timeless, anymore. It's really. Yeah. If you're a dresser, like you are, and I keep referring to you, but I've got to because you are. And we get <laughs> well, some I love great, it for sure. Well, no, but we get some great dressers in, and some of them, slightly older, not always, um, want not what I call too many Christmas tree bits on it, yeah. if you know what I mean. And then, I, but Terry can do that. I, can, I could do, he'd probably say, you're doing that wrong, and I'd take note. But I can cut sort of... A, a very snappy cut, but you know it's pointless. He's he does his thing, I do my thing, but together yeah. it's with a firm. I mean, yeah. we don't. It's not. Oh, you know, I'm doing it because I want it. That like we mm -hmm. we fit in, yeah. we fit in. If it's something, we do things together. I mean, we'll 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 share things together. We're doing one at the moment. We're cutting a window model, and we kind of I wind him up, and then he winds me up, and then we end up with something really nice. Yeah, <laughs> you make a point that I think is really interesting, which is that you know, your clients really are dressers. They enjoy dressing well. And, you know, these are individuals, I mean, amongst the ones that I know that have, you know, traversed uh, all of British tailoring, and they've ended up here because, you know, they're able to really enjoy the work that you're doing for them. The last year has been a total change in tailoring, obviously because of the pandemic <coughs> and the way people's minds are set. We're doing a lot more sportswear, for instance, mm -hmm. this year. And the past six months, first time we've never done this before, we've been making like cashmere jackets or tweed jackets, very lightweight jackets, mm -hmm. with no hair cloth in it at all, just one piece of canvas in it. So it's just like a cardigan. And it's quite amazing the amount of people that like that very, very soft shoulder look. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a way we'll be going more forward with that type of look as well, which is totally different from our look yeah, for a year ago, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. This was all very, yeah. very new but to us. It's, but it's just a variation on a theme. It's yeah. like a tunic. Mm -hmm. You know, they make such a big deal about tunics. It's knowing where all the braid goes, where the buttons goes. It's basically, even the unconstructed jacket, mm -hmm. it's a variation on a theme. But I love it because when, if you'd have said to me a couple of years ago, I'm going to have a lovely unconstructed jacket or indeed a sports coat, Format. We call them change coats. Mm -hmm. We make a lot of checks, but we get a lot of plain uh, uh, jackets. And, and I'm going to wear it with jeans. I'm like, really? I think it's great. Yeah. I, I do want to see. As long as the jeans are, you know, scrubbed out, but no yeah. holes in them. I'm not getting yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. You've all got I, holes in them. Right? Dressed what? in them. Yeah. You've got holes in them. <laughs> I haven't got any jeans. Have you seen this thing? <laughs> and, uh, but basically, I love it. I, I really do. I love it. I love a button-down mm -hmm. shirt with it undone pair of knocked out sneakers or yeah. Gucci's. I think that could look, I don't like scruffy chic, I know that's stupid. Yeah. I just think it looks quite chic on the yeah. right guy, obviously. Yeah. You get some guy try that and it doesn't work, but we've got some, 
very good figured yeah. customers, if that's the terminology. Well, you can make classic tailoring, you know, really look good and casual. I mean, oh, a absolutely. great jacket that's with a pair we, of jeans and, you well, know, know, tennis shoes, why that's not? That's what's happened over know. the last couple of years, really, where look has gone away from suits quite a lot. Although we're doing a lot more suits now than we, we are, were doing funny enough, you're a right, year ago. Back again. We virtually had no, yeah. we weren't doing many suits well, last many. year, were Jackets, jackets, jackets. It was all jackets. Yeah. And now we're just starting to do more suits Suit. now, where people are floating back to the office. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that, um, you know, I certainly love suits, right? And so, you know, and kind of doing something together, I mean, I really want something that, you know, really speaks to both of you, right? Oh, thank you. And so, you know, John, I was thinking that, you know, the work that you've done with the Duke of Edinburgh, the late Duke, you know, it would be fun to echo some of that. From my point of view, it's a bit of nostalgia for me. Yeah, a little bit of just a tailoring tradition there. Yeah, and would you mind if I cut it the same the same style? No, I think it would be great to explore those details, right? Thank because you. fashion is always I kind think of that makes sense as you reinventing to, itself. So you let's bring some of this back. Of Taylor, be it, unfortunately he's not with us, but yeah. um, that would be nice for me to go down the route of, you know, simplicity but with elegance, maybe. Yeah, that would be yeah. great. And then Terry, I mean. I think an odd jacket and pair of trousers yeah, you know, would, would be great nice to kind tweet. of complement a formal suit. That'd be nice. totally, totally different. Tweet would be yeah. nice, I think. And of course, one of the other great strengths of a proper bespoke tailor, someone that really uh, has knowledge and experience, is that understanding of cloth is really looking to your recommendations of kind of where you would take me you know, with the cloth. What do you think, Terry? Okay, well, sports we'll, jacket and yeah, trousers. We'll, start. we'll have a look. I'll show you some of our tweeds. We've got our own house tweeds. Okay. We'll give you a show of that. If you like yeah. that, we'll do it with that. If not, we'll look at some other okay. tweeds. And then uh, where do you think that well, we would I'm go? Well, I'm going to go a bit boring, but it looks fantastic. Yeah. Now, but you're the customer. You well, I like love it. the classics. I mean, This will be classic, yeah. but with a difference. Um, the French called it, they call it pheasant's eye, but in England we call it a bird's eye. Okay. And I think... A, well, let me ask you, I would thought a grey on your complexion looks equally as good as blue. Would you like a grey, maybe? You know, I, I love both, but I, I certainly I gravitate more towards kind of darker greys. That, that would be nice yeah. in a bird's eye. Mm -hmm. Pretty traditional, but looks great. You can wear, you know, pale blue shirt, white cream, go with a, I don't know, tattersall type of tie or a classic Hermes tie. Yeah. It's one of those, and if you were asked to go to a race meeting and you're in England and you're, you know, the tweed look is kind of gone. You could put that on with a pair of brown suede shoes and a cream shirt and a knitted tie, you'd be, you'd be fine. So okay. it's kind of versatile, depending on what you, the accessories. Yeah. And you've got fabulous shoes and you'd, everything about your stuff so is bang So it be a proper on. London city suit, but then also... Yeah, but if you were here and some, a friend said, would you like to go to a race meeting? I've got nothing to wear. You have. You yeah. can get away with that quite easy with a yeah. different shirt and brown suede shoes or brown brogues or whatever. Yeah. So. I'll go down that route, and Terry, you know, you'll we'll go have a down look at the tweed. Probably yeah. put a nice pair of flannel trousers with oh, yeah, it. That'd, that'd be nice. That yeah, that'd be lovely. Okay. I don't think you want to do the whole suit in the tweed. Yeah. Well, I don't you know. think you wear. I think a nice change coat because it is. It's not got a. Oh, depending if it's house tweed, perhaps that blue one might be. Oh, well, we'll have a look at the blue. Yeah. one, we'll the green one. See we, we, we got plenty. what you like. We got well, quite let's pull a some fabrics and see. Let's start having some fun. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. So fire who, away. Who who would you like? Would you like me to show you some Yeah, well, why don't we take a look at the... Um, is that convenient? Yeah, I mean, I'd love right. to pull fabric. Well, I mean, oh, we've got plenty, so bear with me a minute. You can really get lost in all this. And yeah. again, one of the great hallmarks of uh, a truly talented tailor is being able to walk their customer through all this fabric. I mean... There's many here, but I know the weight you want, okay. so I'm going to find... Oh, there we are. This is a lesser's cloth. You mm -hmm. probably know the company you've, you know, been what you do, but uh, this is 13 ounce. It's a top quality cloth. The one I'd I'll try and find it, wouldn't it? Beautiful 13 ounce. We do heavier, but I think this is great. You can wear this, you know, through to sort of July. You don't want one that heavy is where you finish with it in March because that's pointless. So this is a great cloth. It's a top. Ah, there we go. I mean, your choice, Kirby, my love, but. That's a bird's eye fabric. Mm -hmm. I don't think we want blue. I, I'm not keen on the blue bird's eye. It's yeah. not a true blue. But what about a lovely grey? That's yeah. quite... 13 ounces. And I've made him hand. one in, uh, many years ago. Okay. In fact, it was a morning suit made yeah. out of that. Really? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. But, so I mean, I, I'm I, talking classic yeah. suit. Do you think? I'd love the grey? idea of this. I mean, is this something the late Duke would wear? Yes. Oh, I, I'm, I, 
You know the full uh, morning suit? Mm -hmm. yeah, I made him one in bird's eye. Really? Okay. Because he was adventurous. Okay. Most people, you know, either black or that normal grey. Mm -hmm. I made him a three-piece morning suit out of that. But Looked he was fantastic. always primarily wearing solids too, though, right? Yes, you're right. It yeah. wasn't, even if you look at his sportswear, yeah. apart from tweeds that he has to wear through, mm -hmm. you know, Balmore or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what made him, yeah. I think, you, you, you can get... You can get fed up mm -hmm. with too over patterned. Yeah. It's like, you know, you go to out for a function and they go, oh, he's got that suit on again. Yeah. Whereas you can, you know, that's just a Wear classic. Wear that five days a week. You are classic, yeah. I can see by your tie and everything. That would make a fantastic. Can I make a single breasted? Are you happy with that? Yeah. This is, How would you cut this? So let's talk about that. I'm so. going to cut it very simple. Okay. It's going to be straight pockets mm -hmm. and flat. Okay. Two button front. Okay. No vents really? in the back. Well, you can carry it. Yeah. If you weren't the figure you, without keep flattering you, <laughs> I would have said had side vents in it. But I'd like to. Great make Taylor it. has their way. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to make that without vents in the back. Okay. And, and all the Duke's jackets were without vents, mm. right? Yeah. Cuffs, as you call it, or turn ups. Okay. And four pleats. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's a little full of trousers, but it won't be, it won't be baggy. So two out pleats on each yeah, side? Pointing towards the fly, okay. not pointing towards the pocket. Okay. That's what we call a reverse, and it's great, okay. but it's, you want an English suit, and ours point forward, so <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get pointed yeah. forward plates. Yeah, if that's well, let's okay do proper you. pleats then. We're, we're gonna use our own sleeve lining, because okay. we've got one that's been around for the year dot, but, but we've converted it into a little bit more color in it. Okay. So we're gonna put, and you can do it on that beautifully. The body will be lined in gray, mm -hmm. and the sleeves will be, I'll have our sleeve lining. Great. I'm not gonna muck about with fancy linings and yeah. all that. I would do that if you had a sports cut, maybe we'd talk mm -hmm. into a burgundy or something. Just keep it absolutely, yeah. and you can wear it in 10 years time, and it'll be. Yeah, 20 years might. time. Yeah, okay, well I think we're. So that's the one, what we do is, so there's no slip up, and I do that, and that ain't gonna go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we're going for. It'll look fabulous on you, only truly. Okay. It really will. Yeah, I mean, it's a great classic piece that is truly foundational. Yes. And I think that when everyone's yes. going bespoke, you know, the temptation is to go to the bright, the loud, the unusual. You're but right. inevitably, as you said, those are the things you grow tired of or that you might find falling out of fashion. But something like this, a nice, well, solid. That, that'll, that'll keep you in good stead because it looks great. Yeah. And this sounds a bit mean, which I'm not, but I'm a bit careful. Mm -hmm. If the trousers ever went on that, just change the button into a, a black ebony button. Yeah. You've got That'd a great blazer guy in there and you could get another 10 years out of it. It seems <laughs> silly, but you know, it's, yeah. it's what you do because yeah. the coat's great. And yeah. sometimes the trousers get shiny mm -hmm. and you think, I'm not gonna wear that anymore. You know, done that many times. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's keeping it traditional isn't yeah. it well i mean again i mean if you're investing in proper bespoke tailoring you expect that longevity i agree right and the durability i, and, I uh, think it's lovely to hand it on to your son yeah you know if it's a jacket that you look a little tired mm -hmm. and he puts it on with jeans and there you go and it carries on for another 10 years it's tradition isn't yeah. it and the duke was incredible thrifty in terms of having things mended and brought back in for adjustments yeah, right i think it's their upbringing you know it's um you know waste not want not sort of thing mm -hmm. yeah i don't see anything wrong in that providing it's not gone too far yeah. you know when it's gone too far then end of story but <coughs> can't have too many patches right but Never did. Okay. Never did. Honestly, repaired everything. Well, he was very good wearer. He didn't. He wasn't heavy. Yeah. And we repaired. I never patched anything ever. Hmm. Interesting. Wouldn't. I don't think he would have worn that. Yeah. I think you liked, lived in, but not. You know. Yeah. Well, great. Well, that's exciting. Well, that's what we're going to do. Okay. What we'll do is, we'll, get Terry, to come up. Okay. See what you end up mm -hmm. with then, and then we'll do. The set of measures, yeah. and we both can. We like to bounce off of one another. Okay. Side. Yeah, I mean your boards are right next to each other, and we 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 get on great. I mean you have to. If I love what I do, but if you don't get on with the, you know, forget it. Yeah. We get on. We argue. Not argue. We we debate. Banter. Is that the word? Yeah. Banter. That's the word. <laughs> I'm gonna go write this down just okay. to make a little note, although I won't make a slip up, and I'll get Terry. So that was, um, I. I guess a great recommendation from John of the uh, bird's eye, right? And so now we're gonna do something uh, slightly, I guess, more casual, like a, a separates, yeah, right? An odd jacket and a pair of trousers? Yeah, I think we need a nice tweed, yeah. that'd be very nice. Okay. And what you should really go is the house suede. That okay. would be lovely if you did that. 
it's just a case of really deciding which one you prefer to go with. Okay. Whether it's the blue, which I'm sporting. It's a beautiful and jacket. Tom, Tom Chamberlain's got the <laughs> yeah. same one. It's a, I saw which him wearing it one. the other day. Um, so this is a, that's got a great hand too, wow. It's, it's a lovely quilt, 16 ounce. Mm -hmm. This or the house suite. Okay. Um, you won't, obviously you won't have it quilted. Yeah. You just do a lot of shooting jackets yeah. quilted. Okay. But it's that one without the quilting, which so, is quite a bold check. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about this, because this is a beautiful fabric and it's got a, 16 a great ounce. hand. 16 yeah, it's ounces. a 16 okay. ounce fabric. We had it made specially for us. So it's a house tweed. It's worked on a basket weave design. If you mm -hmm. look at the design, it, it's a 1950s design, but we decided to sort of go with this design because we both, you know, I love it and John loves it. And we just thought we'd do it in a blue because normally they were always done in a brown or a beige. Mm -hmm. And we just thought blue would be lovely. It's a beautiful blue color. I mean, I think that I probably would get a little more wear out of this yes. than I would green. Yeah. I mean, as far as like matching with my complexion, what do you think? Well, I think the wonderful thing with the blue is you can wear it any time. Okay. Yeah, you know, if you're in town, mm -hmm. you can wear it in the evening, gun it for a meal. Yeah. With the green one, it looks a little bit country. Country. Yeah, so this one I could still wear in London as an odd jacket. Yeah, or right. a jacket, or mm -hmm. if you're caught somewhere a bit more formal, you yeah. can wear it, or somewhere informal, it's a tweed at the end of the day. Yeah, great, and then what would you do with trousers, then, if we did something like this? Well, it would be nice. Now, <clears throat> I think a flannel would be wonderful okay. um, in the trousers. It's just yeah. a case of, did you want to go with a traditional gray flannel or did you want to go like an RAF blue? Let's, let's mm. have a look at a couple. Shows. I don't know, I kind of defer. I mean, again, one of the things I love about a great tailor is their knowledge of fabric. <laughs> and I think there's a role to be played in terms of kind of pushing a client maybe a little bit outside his lane. Yeah, we don't want you too traditional. It can get a little bit boring. Because I've got gray flannels already. You have, yeah? I mean, nothing, I mean, I've got... If I'd You've got to be seen... careful. If it's too blue, it, it could look a bit boring. I mean, obviously, the grey is gonna, oh, gonna look go. really good with it. Yeah. It's always gonna look very, very attractive with it. So um, what would be your, I mean, again, number one recommendation, but then keeping in mind kind of versatility? I was, yeah. I was thinking it would probably look nice to do something like that. It's a little bit out, yeah. thinking out of the box. You can wear brown shoes with it very, very easy. I mean, I just give you that nice like casual look. Yeah. Why do we do that? I mean, I've got gray flannel, so we've got yeah. that. And what weight is this? Because it's a beautiful. Is that 13, 14 13, ounces? 14 ounces. Yeah. So proper London it's a nice, pair of flannels. Yeah, it's a nice Fox's flannel, as you know, probably the best flannels you can buy. Yeah. Well, I've had 13, some uh, lightweight ounce. flannel done a while back, and mm. I think it probably was a mistake because with that flannel, you really want the weight of the cloth. Yeah. I've just, got a nine ounce flannel suit, but it's literally one day wear. Yeah. And, it just you know, doesn't have the body that you would no, associate no with body the hand you, of the cloth. No, you lose the creases out mm -hmm. of it straight away. It's a bit like wearing a linen suit, really. Yeah. You, you can't keep the creases in it at all. Yeah. Well, this is beautiful. I think with a nice dark brown pair of uh, shoes. I've got the shoes in mind. I've got a beautiful pair of dark brown pigskin oh, yeah. cap to Oxford that Dominic Casey made. Oh, that, that would, would look brilliant with this. Yeah, no, that look really, really nice. Okay. Well, I think that's a brilliant okay. recommendation. So we'll go with that? Yes. Ah, what a delight. Just find yeah. a nice fancy lining to put yeah. in with it. How would you line it? I mean, well, let's talk a little bit about styling. So would you do, how would you make for me? Just Obviously single breasted. Okay. Um, so I would, do you want to keep it nice and traditional English style? I think so, but talk to me a little bit well, about what you would have I was have thinking in mind. a slanted pocket okay. rather than a straight pocket mm -hmm. with a little ticket pocket out above. Okay. Single breasted lapel, obviously. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want a double breasted lapel. Yeah. How do you feel on a button one jacket? So I'm a bit of a button one lover. You know, going back to my huntsman days, I yeah. actually loved the button one. Well, I like the idea of a proper single like button. Well, let's go with the button yeah, one. And I don't have anything like that, so it'd be an hey. interesting addition to the wardrobe. No, it should be really nice. And we'll keep you with side vents. Okay. Slightly longer. Mm -hmm. With slanted pockets? Yeah. And a ticket pocket? Yeah. Okay. Sounds fun. We'll go with that? Yeah. Let's and do look it. for some lining. What yeah. sort of lining do you think you... You don't want anything fancy. Yeah, no, I mean, I would do something that just really kind of complements the fabric. Right, I mean, I, I prefer slightly more subdued linings, nothing quite like that. <laughs> no bright pink. No, we'll keep, keep you away from that. <laughs> a lining I absolutely love mm -hmm. with a tweed is this shot lining. Okay. It's quite hard wearing. It looks quite dark. 
and it don't look too flashy. You don't mm -hmm. want anything too bright, do you? No, I think something that's so really... This looks looks lovely. What about like a navy or something no, on the darker for, side? Look. William's favorite. I probably would go with something like this. I'll keep it nice. Yeah. Do you like the, the shot, the two-tone look? Yeah, I like the sheen. I mean, it gives it a little bit of flash. We'll go with that, so it's a little right, bit... So I mean, it catches you can the get eye it done bit. on the, the, that side, but I think the I like nicer the side, side is the darker side. It looks yeah. much nicer. Huh. And you would do one button, right? I love a one button. Yeah, okay. I'll wear one button all the time. Yeah. Stitched on the edge as well, because you'd probably want to wear it in town, wouldn't you, sometimes? Mm -hmm. So if we swelled the edges, it could look a little bit country. Okay. A bit casual. Well, yeah. It looks very casual anyway, but... Yeah, I mean, with most of my time kind of either in Dallas, you know, or yeah. here in London, right? I mean, something that I can wear as an odd jacket in town also would certainly yeah. add to the versatility. Yeah, it would look fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Well, brilliant. Oh, that's exciting. This is a, it's got a beautiful hand. Wow. I mean, it's got a really nice hard finish, right? Well, I mean, how would you describe this? I mean, it's... Well, this is what we call real tweed. It's not like the Shetland tweeds. Okay. Anything like that, which are very, very soft, or mm -hmm. the Saxony finish. This is... It's just what we call a real a tweed. Real tweed yeah. It's a hard wearing tweed. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have cashmere in it. I mean, it's no, a no, proper no. country tweed, no, it's, right? It's a proper. Yeah. 16 ounce, perfect weight, not too heavy, not mm -hmm. too light. And it's going to be something hard wearing that will last you a hell of a long time. Yeah. And also, it doesn't bag out. You know, the problem with the Shetlands, they, they tend to get a little bit mm -hmm. stretchy okay. and a little bit cardigany, a little yeah. bit feel too. Okay. Whereas this keeps its shape all the time. I mean, I've got one of these which I actually made in my Tommy Nutter the days, and mm -hmm. my son wears it now. Really? And that goes back to oh, the wow, mid-90s. Yeah. So they just last forever. Yeah. It's just we, when we were looking for a tweed, we wanted something that was going to be hardware and practical mm -hmm. and not too heavy. Yeah. And this, just to be honest with you, Sue, it's down to the ground. Yeah. And I love the basket weave. That's, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? You know, a lot of the house tweeds are much more traditional. Yeah. Right? And this is a very beautiful, very versatile tweed that, as you said, could be worn in the city, could be yeah. worn in the country, That's the something that could get a lot of use out of. We're looking at ways now to introduce another house okay. suite for next year, but I think we're not going to go on the big, bold lines, yeah. because it seems to be this is the nicer way to go, to get much more use Client out favorite. of it. Yeah, I think yeah. so. That's, I think, a winning combination. So uh, what's next? Right, now I think it's time to get you measured up. Okay. Take all the details down. Yeah, exciting and go from there. All right. Do you want to come through okay, so we can take some measurements now? Yeah. It's fine. Okay, this is Sumba Kumarason. Nice to see you again. Who nice is our see assistant. You again, okay. Who will be doing your trousers for measurements for you today. Okay. Yeah, are you, are you going to do measurements first or are you going to do styling first? That's a good idea. Let's do styling. Styling That's what first. We normally do. Okay. Why not? Okay. Right. Single breasted. Yes. Button two. Mm -hmm. Four button cuff. Working holes, obviously. Mm -hmm. Horn buttons. Okay. That's what we do. And they're two hole. Okay. Rather than four. We like those. It's slightly different. Okay. And then inside pockets, I mean, <laughs> when I started, you got one. Yeah. But I think most people would two want for two. two inside pockets. Yeah. Um, I don't really need more than just. Well, no, you can have exactly what you like. But yeah. would you, do you use May I Look, Kirby? Would you? This is a new addition to us. That's quite nice, actually. That ticket left facing. You know, sometimes I use this. I to think that's good. Cards in. Do you ever use the pen pocket? Not really. Then it cas yeah. cascades more yeah. pockets in. It's not attached to the facing, so I like that. Two inside pockets okay. and a ticket left facing. On the app, that's so one each side. Mm -hmm. I was. You travel a lot, may I? Yeah. So I keep around here you know, like that, so you can see. What I, right. I just wondered. You haven't got a hold. Sometimes we put a little tab and button so that you may want, you know, you're traveling. Is that necessary? I don't think so. It's not for me. If you, if you go to a hotel and they press it, yeah. could bruise the suit. So to him, that's great. Um, no vents, plain back. And with the, so we're fine on that. It's no vents, most important. And the outside, we've got cross-jetted flaps. So we've got a flap on that. I like that. And this is going to be a proper two-button, not a three-roll two. No, two-button suit. Literally a straight old-fashioned, although, you know, two-button's been around for years. But absolute classic. I'm going to go with cuffs, as you say, or turn-ups. Mm -hmm. And our, our standard one and three-quarters. Okay. That's the standard all around the West End. Okay. And I'd love to put, if I can explain, that's a reverse pleat. Mm -hmm. 
where it points to the pocket, I'm going to put four in and the they all point towards the fly, so they're the reverse way round. But I'm putting a little show pleat in there, which is quite nice. It won't make it baggy. I love the straight side pockets. I'm not a great lover of slant. So, so we're going four pleats, normal, and then we'll go straight side pockets, personal. Hip pockets, when you come in, normally we're a one hip pocket man, but would you like two? I'll take one. On the right side right with side. a hole and button? Yes. I think yeah. we put a bone button on it, finish it all off, it looks great. So normally where I keep my... We've got a new thing, which is not new, but with us it's kind of new. Would you like a little strip of lining in the front of the trousers? I don't think it's necessary on a 13 ounce, but it's not a... You've got to try and pick up on that lining mm -hmm. and the crease if you haven't pressed in a hotel and I defy anybody to get them together. So yeah. it was just a suggestion. So that's cool. Zip fly or button, sir? Zip. Thank God for that. Yes. <laughs> Having the patience for button flies. <laughs> yeah, they don't sit so good. And then we're going to do an extension band, which is that. Okay. But I'm putting a, the old fashioned yeah. hook and bar. Okay. And I'd like to see nice strap and buckle on the side. That's mm -hmm. part of the act. Yeah. But cut for braces, high waisted. Well, would you want? Yes, but not not high, not higher than that. Or would you like them higher than that? How would you do it? The Duke was not a brace person. Okay. So I would cut them that height. Okay. He didn't wear. I mean, uniforms, yeah, and, and full evening dress. But his his actual suits were, i.e., same as that, really. Okay. I wouldn't go, unless, would you like brace buttons inside in case? Yes. Yeah, I think that makes sense, doesn't it? So brace buttons inside first class. I think we, what we'll do as well, we'll put a V opening in the back. Put that little V opening. It looks nice actually, whether you have it with buttons or not. I like that. Just a, not right down to the band, just a little one at the top. Okay. Looks really good. So that's good. Yeah, I think I've got everything. Lining, we're going with lining to match, i.e. grey. I've got the... Um, Cloth. In fact, I've got the number down. That's fine. You have a striped sleeve lining. Or yeah, you? I'm putting our striped <coughs> sleeve lining, how slight sleeve lining. And what we'll do to make it nice as well, we we'll put the striped sleeve lining in the band, and we'll put grey curtains so that it looks like the jacket. I do that a lot. Sleeve lining grey, band lining curtains. It's the thing we put inside, so it's got relevance to the jacket looks really good i'm not sure if that's got it yeah in other yeah, words see that that's got that. that's got okay. dark underneath and that matches the coat i'm going to put striped sleeve lining where that's blue okay. and then i'm going to put the gray exact match that you've got in the body of the coat it looks really nice so it's kind of boom 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 you know it looks good so that's great so shall i measure yeah first do, measure. do the measurements can i Take your tape instead of the old boy no, walking out. I've got your out. special tape. Oh, no. you probably find a lot easier to use. <laughs> see, see what I get. That's see what you use. That's what I see you using. All you mean the time. that's what I normally measure? With. <laughs> no, but this is a special customer. Uh -huh. I think I ought to have a tape. I think somewhere <laughs> down there. Well, you want to put a mark on it for you. <laughs> that's, this is not going to. I'm not going to stick this in you, but I'm going to stick it in you. Okay. If I can have your coat done up, you want to. Stand so I Turn can around. have you so like so. And here we go. Right. Okay. Hopefully not too soft. Okay. Didn't. Thank you very much. Just to get it right, obviously. Here we go. Right. Do you know what the numbers are on the tape? <laughs> I'd like two and three quarters, seven and three quarters, 17 and a half. That's a good length, 13. Let me just check that out. Bearing in mind we've got no vents in it, I don't want to get it any longer. 30 some, but that's spot on. I'm going to give you a cross W and a cross bottom if I may. I'm going in a little different to this because I want to get it quite nice. I like six and three quarters cross W and cross B. I'd like seven and a half. Just drop your arms, Kirby, if you don't mind. Thank you, sir. Let's get rid of that. 
pop that there. Right, I'm going to get you to hinge the arm. You've done this before, obviously. And point your fingers, that's it, fantastic. Just like that, please. I'm going to come back, Siamber, if I may. I'd like 20 and a half, whoops. Twenty and a half, thirty-one and three quarters, please. Okay. I'm going to give you. Could you put this in a bracket for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. And just put right side, would you? Fifteen. Good. Now then. And in that half back. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. That's good. Eight and a half net, please. And if you could put a bracket and then close the brackets for me, if you would. Five and seven eighths, 30 and a half. That's great. Let's just pop that around. Let's have you around now. Smashing. Now I'd like you to actually remove the coat. I can help you off. Thank you, Terry. Okay. Okay, here we go. Just relax. Arms to your side, that's it. Natural, that's grand. I'd like 39 MOD, please. Just pop that over there. I must have said this millions of times. This is a coat waist. This is not your trouser waist. I've got eight seams to come out of here and I've got to make an allowance for it. Thirty-six, please. Legs together, please, Kirby. Thank you. Okay, same thing here. Lots of seams to come off this. Your trouser measures are completely different to the coat. I'd like 41, please. Can you just stand slightly astride? Okay, here we go. And just put that lovely tie down there. Okay, right. I'd like one and three eight collar stand. Shoulders as SL minus. That's great. I'd like size side my arm, please. I'd like SRB and a nice little sway on there. SRB with a sway on it. And I'm gonna go with let's have your sideways on again. I'm going with medium to long back balance, medium to long back balance. Just one more time around, just let me have a look at you. Yeah, put hollow front shoulders, will you, for me, please. And that's about it for me. And now I'll take over and you do the trousers, Terry, don't you think? Assume with the Yeah, trousers. no, I meant now, rather than you take your measures. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You okay with that? That's yeah. yours. Back, I know you. it's Three yours, quid. otherwise you'll tell me off. <laughs> I can't, I'll, I'll pinch you. Is that something that a tailor really holds on to as <laughs> their tape measure? Oh yeah, yeah. we have a well, nice salt when, when somebody's taking our tape, we, we lose our temper, don't we? <laughs> just a little I bit. I get very grumpy if my tape measure goes just down. Just oh, I borrowed it once <laughs> and I thought I'd lost it. He nearly lynched me. So for the trouser height, you're gonna to stick to what we have mm -hmm. here. You didn't want it any higher. Up. Got 41 and a half. If I could ask you please just to hoist your trousers up as far as they'll go and then just feet slightly apart just for the inseam measure. Thirty-one and a half. Then you'll Kirby, tie up. Just pop your tie, that's great. Just to so just that it doesn't up. ladder it and be it gives a true reading, so Uh, this is the moment of truth. We're going with straight 
with a strap and buckle. So I'm so, yeah. you know, we're close, but not crazy. 33 and a half. And then that's, feet that's good. together, please. Got 39, not too tight. Like that. I think that's good. I'm 41, there's usually two inch difference, that's pretty neat. 39, yeah? Yeah. Give me a, yeah, get an indication. This is 20 knee. Are you happy with that width? Or yeah, I think so. You're happy with that width, yeah. I mean, nothing too skinny, but... No, no, no. You don't go too 18. Fat, you? no. You're happy with the bottoms? What do you think, John? What are they? They're 18. I would have gone 18, seven, no. 17 and a half as a mm. traditional. Okay. That's a trip. If you came in, forgive me, the, you know, years ago and all that bit, that was pretty well bang on. Now it's 15, 14 and three quarters. That 17 and a half is a lovely width. Okay. Yeah. I will go with your recommendation. It's only, a, if I can explain on the tape without boring you, it's literally, people, customers get worried. But when we talk about half an inch, oh my God, it's that much because it's on the double. It's mm -hmm. a quarter of an inch on the double. Yeah. That's all you're losing, but it will just knock the heels in a bit. Yeah, okay. thank you. There we go. <laughs> you're welcome. You finished? I am. I'll take over off. So, no, let's, you do some work. Come on. <laughs> As you got your jacket off, we'll work a bit sort of backwards, but it doesn't matter, does it? <clears throat> okay. Okay. What chest did you have? 38? 39 I had. I had a cut a little Ooh. fuller. But it's MOD, it'll end up 38 and a yeah. half. That's what I'm going to go. 38 and a half. <clears throat> I scale back, it's just a different way, it's not a... And again, I know this is less than John's, but 35 and a half. Yeah, I've got 36, but I'll scale back half an inch. I'm trying to save on cloths. <laughs> no, I can't work that way. <laughs> it'll end up 35. <laughs> Um, 40 and a half. Same thing, 41, so that's the half an inch. Just need a couple of your pin. Oh, absolutely. Get a bill in for that, don't worry. This is where the measurements get a little bit different. Grab that out. This is from my old huntsman days, this. <laughs> It just gives you the side depth. It works quite well. Nine and a half. Fourteen. Twenty. Seven and seven eighths. I think all the figuration, we've got all the figuration that John's got, but can you just add wedge on the back and downright? You can do a downright on the... I was going to do that with you, but yeah, it's heavy yeah. downright. Sorry, I'm, going to put a, I'm going to put a wedge like yourself right through twice. Because you've got them forward bones, haven't you? Yeah, it's quite, yeah. you got slight RB, haven't you? Yeah. 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 And same as what John said, medium to long balance. <clears throat> Have you noticed somebody with the front of the trousers when Terry's done? Yeah, no, just stand side. sideways eh? when Terry's done. Lower You've than the front. A, just a slow dip. I'd, yeah. I'd just bring them up a good quarter. In the front, that is. Styling for the trousers, we've got all the trouser measurements, mm -hmm. but styling for the trousers, for the flannels, are you going to be the same, or are you going to be wearing a belt with the... Probably with the braces. The, braces so they'll be the same. Tabs. Yeah. So braces, tabs. I would suggest you put a lining in the fronts of the trousers, because yeah. yeah. it's flannel, it's a bit soft, and it okay. just stops them yeah. bagging out of the knees. Okay. Okay, right. Now, do you have any turn-ups on the other trousers? Do you want turn I think turn-ups on flannels yeah. look nice, but can we go a little bit deeper? Yes. Just a two-inch turn-up rather than two one inches. and three quarters? Yeah, great. Give you a nice big turn-up. And also, can we go a bit wider on the legs or do you, sure. on the bottoms? Uh -huh. 
we just bring it out to 18. Yeah, okay. We'll see how nice. it looks at the fitting, just to give that it a I think wider. really with a flannel, you should have four pleats. Okay. So it's the same way as what John's cutting you, but well, they will look a little bit different. They certainly will. And pockets, straight sides, which are always very That's nice. That's got jetted top side pockets. No, we just can put straight, straight sides. Side, better yeah. with four pleats, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you, with casual trousers, do you like two hip pockets or are you happy with just a one pocket? I mean, traditionally I would have two hip pockets, but what would you? Well, I have two, if you're happy with the two. Yeah. yeah. And you want them both with hole and button, yeah? Uh, you know, it's a good question. I mean, if I were to do a button, I probably would just do it. I mean, the right pocket is the only one that's ever used. Right? All right, very, so very you, you just pocket. keep it for some extra. Yeah. So which side would you want the button then? Right side? Right side. Okay, so it's right hole and button, left plane. Mm. You're having right hole and button. What it, was it always the other way? I'm not sure. Yeah. With the, <laughs> yeah, with well, the, with the Americans, with <laughs> yeah. the, it was the other way around. Bill folder yeah. on the left mm. and plane on the right. No, I'm just saying, it's funny how things change over the years. It's funny, it was, and I very rarely put my billfold in my back pocket. It's no, but it was always, yeah. we used to never, we never asked, did we? We used to, when it was an American gentleman, it's always it would on the be left. boom, 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 like that, you know. That was, it was, yeah, it's funny, not quite it's so much now. Yeah. We always ask that just to make sure. That's what it's asking. <laughs> okay, so we slip the jacket on. Sounds great. Sounds great. And how different are the measurements between the two? I mean, do you read really. each other's measurements? Not hardly anything, because he went... 35 and a half, I went 36, but I scaled back, whatever that means, and now I'm in on a woman. And then with the chest, I had, and I put net, and mod, M-O-D, which is mean a lot of things when I cut. It's just, it, they end up the same, basically. I've got 30, Terry, which is what that is. Yeah, what do you fine, think? Isn't it? You don't want it any longer, do you? I wouldn't have thought, I was gonna, no, I wasn't. I was gonna make it a tad shorter with no was vents, it? but I don't know, 30 is cool. Look a little bit. I think that's nice. Okay. I mean, balance is going to take up quite a bit anyway. Yeah, you're putting a longer back balance on, aren't you? Yeah, you can't go too long, can you? No, no, that coat's great. But I mean, in theory, looking at the figure without the coat on, that needs plenty of length, exactly. Mm. And then we'll, I'm going to put a wedge through there and more like yourself, you know. Mm. Okay, right. Sorry, it's just all technical. You've got prominent blades, did you? Yes, you got, very prominent, yeah. Yeah. Eight and three quarters, 16. Yeah, let's keep it the same, 30. I think that's nice, a lovely length, 30, isn't it? Yeah, so it's sort yeah, of it's good, yeah. kind of all round thing. How does this feel across, are you happy with the width across the back? You know, it hasn't been something that's bothered me. It's not bothered you. Maybe it's a little... No, it looks okay. I just wonder whether you like more room or less room. I wear mine skin tight, so there's absolutely no movement whatsoever. Eight and a half. Can we bend your arm? Nineteen and three quarters, thirty-one and a half. We cut different sleeves, so that might wonder why it's taken an elbow and stuff, we cut a slightly different sleeve, so it, it, it kind of pivots a bit different. I've got five and seven eighths, so what you got? Here. Yeah. Well, I've got five and seven eighths, but I'm wondering where it comes in. I think that's right, six is too wide. Yeah, yeah, I was going to bring in a five and three quarters. Oh, maybe in the fitting. Well, time Could it be. goes, because it's finished. It's yeah. the way that sleeve is sewn in, and five and three quarters is yeah. just as... Five and three quarters. I mean, it's nothing, is it? Splitting hairs, isn't it, really? 31, just for the fittings, probably a touch Terry, too long. Terry, can you take a cuff measure? Because I didn't. That's a nice, <coughs> neat cuff, but not too tight. Just to give us an indication, why not? What we... 11? Eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. That's fine. We can always scale that down. Go with that. Now, cross waist, but can you put DB? DB 21 and a quarter. Yeah, that would make sense. Well, I think we got everything else. Do you want to take trouser measurements? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very sloping, aren't you? You're like mine, really, shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that left shoulder, really. Or is it the right? The right one. Right, yeah. Yeah. You haven't broke it or anything, have you? Yeah, you know, I had a rotator cuff surgery here. Oh, that's what it is, yeah. 
John's got that, but it's where he dropped his wallet once. <laughs> <laughs> you hear this? Charming, isn't it? Huh? Charming. Yeah, <laughs> someone in Florence fell out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just going to check this sleeve, cause see if there is a difference. It's slightly, I made it, yeah, exactly. Nah. To, we'll yeah, it's not much the fitting, it. it's, yeah. we've got a fitting obviously if we were straight finishing we'd yeah, take a lot more going. measures but we're having fittings that well, there's a lot more we when we straight finish mm -hmm. there's a lot more front balance and everything but it's silly because we've got fittings so yeah. you can get too clever by getting too many measures as well will you draft a paper pattern first before you cut the fabric oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. that's what we always do everybody has their own pattern john will cut his and i'll cut mine yeah. and i'll put john's correct <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, then they'll tear it up and say, do not use, you know, that kind of thing. And then if I sneak out, if I go for a fit and he'll go to mine and he'll mark it out of 10. I put, I got, when he goes out, I put one out of 10, must try harder, <laughs> in pencil, and then he rubs it out. I, don't, I wouldn't do that to his pen. <laughs> Thank you, dear boy. Brilliant. So is that it? That's it. Yeah, Thanks okay. very much. We've got everything yeah. we need. What Thanks. I'll do is, before you go, if you don't mind, can I have the address of your tailor? And I'm going to ask him a few things. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the final kind of adjustments, I mean, in the bespoke process really is honed in during the fittings. Oh, right? good. The first fitting is very important for us. I mean, it would look awful for you because it normally yeah. is quite a bit of a mess. But mm -hmm. for us, it's so important. And the yeah. second fitting yeah. is the one where you're going to start seeing it okay. once the lapels go on it mm -hmm. and the lining goes in. It, start, it comes together then. And be asked questions. No, we don't, you don't <laughs> no, ask questions, you know, do you? We will suggest, <laughs> but at the end of the day... It's no good us saying, well, I think you need a five inch lapel on that double brace. Hey, you, I don't want that. I want four and a quarter or whatever. So, you know. Well, I think there is a certain hazard in micromanaging your tailor. I mean, you know, you guys have been at this for <laughs> your entire lives. It's got a, isn't it? you well, you know, it's a little bit of a given to there, I mean, you've got to get that yeah. to there, basically. But there's lots of things you like that we might not yeah. like. Or. But I think, you know, allowing your tailor's kind of artistic instincts to kind of manifest in the garment is. I yeah, yeah, but the little details like the pelvis yeah. that you yeah, just mentioned. Like that, and too. also, you know, not being disrespectful to certain people, but if we walked into a room and there was a beautiful painting on the wall and there's five of us, and I'd say, isn't that lovely painting? And you might say, oh, I don't like the frame. And then that string should be wire. It's nice that it's one-to-one. -one. Yeah. You know, you've got three or four people coming in a fitting room, which we have had. You can't pin it down, can you, really? So from... Yeah. It's going to be what you want, and hopefully I'm happy with the fit and Terry as well, you know, and Samba. Well, that's the personal relationship one. That yeah, absolutely. It's, it gets what, better. It is. It ages. You know, there's some great ready-made suits, but it's, yes, sir, can I turn the sleeves up? Bye-bye. Yeah. We hope to see you for many moons. This is exciting. I can't wait to, um, <laughs> no, it's been to fantastic see this take shape, in. and I guess we'll come back and film a little bit of the making. Yeah, it'd be great yeah. fun to yeah. see you always, truly. Well, gentlemen... Thanks very much. Terry. Wonderful seeing you. John. Kirby, thank you for yeah. everything. Wow, wasn't that incredible? I mean, to be able to be measured up not just by one legendary tailor, but two, uh, what a pinnacle moment. I mean, Terry Haste and John Kent, uh, these are tailors not with years, but decades of experience doing some of the finest work to come out of London. I couldn't be more excited to see the suits that they're putting together for me, and each with their own individual manifestations of their own attention to details. Uh, I am so excited. So I can't wait to see these garments come together. Of course, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for joining me.